This will be a brief introduction video to PHP and how to go about starting using the language. Now, PHP stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor, which is a recursive acronym, and the original name was Personal Homepage. It is basically an engine that processes scripts on the server side instead of the front end or client. Unlike JavaScript that actually requires a browser to do the work, PHP does it on the server side. So we can briefly illustrate this by this example. So we've got a server, you've got your home computer. Sorry for my drawing, it's not that good. And what we're doing here is you've got your your browser, maybe it's a fox or an e or whatever. So HTML and JavaScript, amongst other scri um, scripting languages such as VB Script, uh, run on the actual browser side. And PHP, uh, some of the .NET languages in .NET framework, amongst others, run on the server side. So when you load the website, what you're doing is it goes to the server this executes the scripts and returns HTML so what you're getting is HTML and JavaScript on your client and the server is doing all the hard work of figuring out what to display and everything in s s some cases let's say you're using um, the website is only HTML based so what you do is it, fet it fetches um, the HTML from the site and displays it in your client. But PHP gives an extra layer to this, allowing um, much richer feedback between the client and the server. So um, let's say what's doing here is the server is divided into several components and it might be good to illustrate these and the role that PHP has. So what you've got is your web browser. You load a website up, so you go into the website, to the server, I mean, and the first layer is Apache, which is the web server. Now, you load this website, let's say you've loaded index.php. So it goes to the website, Apache says, oh, it's a PHP file. What do I do? Well, I need a PHP program to process this website. So it loads up the script in PHP. PHP returns, it processes the actual page, the contents, the script, and returns the HTML back to Apache and Apache says oh I can I can deliver this back so it goes here you go and your web page is rendered now we can add an extra layer onto this because PHP and Apache by themselves well you usually want to store data um, from users and maybe have a user account or give uh, richer content to your website so you can have a database system. So MySQL is commonly used uh, for this as it's really easy to integrate both of these just as it is to integrate PHP and Apache. So MySQL is a database handler management system and the extra level of integration you get is when you're computing this PHP script you can make calls to the database, return data process it and finally deliver that data in a readable structure as HTML and return it to the to the client browser. So as you see it's a fully integrated system we've got here and it's quite useful to do 
server-side processing. All of this without the client even knowing anything about this. The user doesn't have to have knowledge about this and the browser doesn't have to handle all that programming stuff. The servers which are usually much more capable of handling such tasks does all the hard work and just delivers back the HTML. So now you've got a brief understanding of what system we require. I'm going to show you an easy way of installing these free programs. Now, there's various ways to do it. There's a manual installation and there's packages that come with everything pre-installed, basically. So, we are going to check out, first of all, um, we've got WAMP server, which is Apache, PHP and MySQL all in a package ready to go. You can get it at wampserver.com slash en for English. Um, another option is USB web server, which is a um, smaller package. You don't have to actually install it, and you can even take it with you on a USB stick or any other format. This is quite useful if you're actually going to go and show a demo at a client site or or maybe a school presentation for example. So you just go to usbwebserver.net, click on download and click on the English version and y what you'll get is a zip file containing this. When you open it up the first time you, you get these files. Now it might be good to actually note that there's another way of installing it which is the manual installation you can find this at php.net um, just click on documentation at the top go to English go to installation on whatever platform you're using if you're using Windows click on that and you go to manual installation steps and it will give you a detailed guide on how to install PHP how to link it up with Apache and obviously you'll have to download Apache PHP and if you're going to use a database system such as MySQL download it separately and you're good to go basically after linking them up if you want to avoid all this hassle just download one of this, these uh, packages which I wouldn't recommend in an actual production environment but if you're just going to be developing then it's much easier to do this so once you've got your package such as USB web server you end up with this exe file and a few folders in, uh, including all the programs that it's going to need. So you double click on this the first time and it will probably ask you if you want to allow yeah here we go access for MySQL and for Apache you have to allow access the computer and we get a green symbol here illustrating that it's up and running. We've also got a default port setup. 80 is the default web port for websites however we're using 8080 here because in many Windows installations you've also got IIS installed which is Microsoft's web server so we're using this alternate version here to display our website and we're going to start with a really quick um, example of how to use PHP so we start off with this which is the document root I'll just go and delete all these items create a new text document let's call it index.php and I'm going to edit it you might want to, to choose Notepad++ as your default editor for PHP files because it's much better than a standard Notepad. So, how do we go about writing a PHP script? Well, the most important parts are the start and end tags. So, to start a PHP script and to end it, we use these symbols. This is a standard. Now, there are some shortcuts such as doing it this way, but it depends on your PHP configuration if you've got it set to do, to, up to do so. So, 
If you've not, it's just better to go the, the easy way and do it the right way, let's say. So let's do a hello world program. So simple as this, echo and in quotes, hello world, and use a semicolon at the end to illustrate that it's the end of a command. I'll save this file, then I come back to USB web server, and I'm going to click on localhost to open it up in the browser, and as you can see, we've got hello world. That means PHP has been installed correctly, it's linked up with a patch chip and you'll see the address is 8080 as we saw in the settings and you can change this port to any other number obviously if you're going to want outside access from the internet you're going to have to open the 8080 port on your firewall but be careful with doing so as well security etc so that's a basic introduction and we'll get into detail on actually developing PHP scripts in the next video.